This is a 1969 Motorola Quasar color television and it utilizes the TS915 works in the drawer chassis. It was 100% solid state with the exception of the high voltage rectifier. And in this video I'm going to share with you how to disable the instant on feature which was typically found on these sets. And what instant on was it provided the viewer with the satisfaction of an instant picture the moment the set was turned on. And how that was achieved was by having a constant uh, lower than normal operating voltage applied to the CRT filaments at all times even when the switch was turned off. And once the power switch was turned on a full 6.3 volts was supplied to the CRT filaments and since it was already preheated the picture would instantly appear. And this feature first started appearing in the late 60s um, and as great as it was for the consumer it was a total disaster for the longevity of the CRT and that's because the filaments were constantly lit regardless of the set being on. So basically if the set's plugged in the wall the CRT is operating. The filaments that is. So many sets uh, had a very short lifespan as a result of this feature. The chassis itself, such as the TS915, this was no problem because it's all solid state. There were no, there was no lower voltage to be supplied to any of the circuits here because, um, you know, there's no warm-up time required for solid state devices. But other sets that used instant on uh, tube type chassis, that means that the chassis tubes were also uh, partially operating even when the set was turned off. So it's to your advantage to disable this feature. It's safer and it's also better for the CRT. And this is a particularly unique set because it still features its original tube. Uh, it's typically unheard of for these sets, uh, especially if they were always plugged in. And that's the reason this thing still survived today is because for some reason the original owners didn't leave the TV plugged in all the time. So it saved this uh, tube's life, basically. So here's a look at the schematic of how this works. You can see we have the line switch right here and also on the line switch, this comes right off the interlock, here's your uh, 120 volts in. Right away it goes to a 770 ohm resistor and there's a switch or in particular on some models there is a switch where you can defeat the instant on feature. This will allow the lowered voltage through this resistor to feed the CRT filament transformer. Hence you have the lower operating voltage because of that resistor. The moment the TV is turned on you now have full 120 volts bypassing this resistor feeding this transformer thus you have a full 6.3 volts output through the transformer. Now you can see there's a little note here and it says not in FO2 through F10. And if we take a look at the drawer here you can see this is a TS915 dash F06 it was manufactured in October 1969 that's the date code stamp right below it there so this being an F06 we know this doesn't have the 
quick on switch. In quick on, instant on, it's the same thing. And as you can see, they have a little dotted line that shows that the switch is bypassed. Now, had this set had the instant on switch, defeat switch, it would have been located on the power supply chassis and it would have been just to the right of the orange circuit breaker right here but from the factory it never had one and the wiring harness that um, feeds to that switch still contains the appropriate wires but there are no pins in the socket on the power supply you know, the, the wire harnesses were just mass produced, so they just threw it in there anyway. But here's a look at the location of that 770 ohm resistor and the uh, power switch. Here's the power switch. It's kind of hard to see all this. But right here is the 770 ohm resistor. They mounted it to the top of the chassis for a heat sink. And here's the interlock. Since it's a works in the drawer, uh, it's got two sets of interlocks. It's got one behind the set. And it's got one right here, too. Well, anyway, there's a black wire that comes out of the interlock. And it goes directly to the power switch. From the power switch, it feeds this resistor and then it goes to this terminal block which you can see this yellow wire and then what makes this particular chassis a little different is the fact that this has that bypassed wire and you can't really see it but there's a black wire that's tied onto this lug and it loops around and it comes to this terminal right here now had you removed this bypass then you could utilize this yellow wire and another black wire that feed down through the wire harness back to the power supply and you could put a switch in. But that's not really necessary to put the switch in. Uh, I just want to entirely disable it. And the good news is, is that disabling this feature doesn't require any drastic modifications to the set. All you need to do is disconnect that resistor and since the 120 volts line voltage is supplied right here I'm going to disconnect this resistor right here put a piece of heat, uh, heat shrink tube on the bare end of the lead and just route it out of the way that way that resistor never sees voltage through it even when the sets plugged in so the good news is is that you can now use this TV in the conventional manner you can safely leave it plugged in and the CRT filament will be off as long as the TV is off and that makes this a great everyday TV then because I won't be burning up that original CRT so I'm going to go ahead and isolate that resistor and that's pretty much about it. Here's a look at the power switch now that the instant on voltage dropping resistor has been isolated. As can be seen, the lead was disconnected at this lug right here. And I put a piece of the heat shrink tubing on the exposed end of the resistor lead and just pushed it up and out of the way. So now it's nice and safe. Instant on has been disabled and that shall prolong the life of this nice strong original Motorola CRT. Also of importance is to always reinstall any protective shielding that was originally equipped on the chassis. So I'll just mount this. The rest of the chassis looks pretty good. I've had the set since October of 2007. 
I got it from the original owners in Chicago. And all I had to do at the time was just uh, repair the chroma module and the vertical module. It had a few bad caps on it. it had some intermittent conditions. But otherwise the set was in great working condition. So I'm going to go ahead and put it all back together now and this thing should be all set and ready to go. Here's a look at the set now that it's all been reassembled. I'm ready to go ahead and try it out now. Here's a look at the CRT. You can see that it's completely out. The instant on has been successfully disabled. Better. It's even luckier that uh, the printer is married to Larry's sister. Um, what about the promotion? Larry suggested we cool that for a time. <laughs> you know, until everyone... Not that bad. Just a few seconds for it to turn on. Uh, that could be forever. That's the period of time Larry suggested. <laughs> Honey. Sweetheart. Oh, what? Yes. Uh, Darren. There's something that Uncle Arthur told me that... Honey, I was just about to mention that. Um, he, um, he told you about this, didn't he? Yes. So I'm not really a hero because that bank robber couldn't have hurt me. Is that what he told you? Well, th th there's a little bit more to it than that. <laughs> well, why didn't he tell me himself? Well, you see, he thought it would be easier. Better if I did it. What is it? <sighs> I don't get it. Well, um, uh, Uncle Arthur was just trying to build your confidence. That isn't a, a lucky charm? Hardly. And uh, that bank robber was holding a gun on me, and I... Well, I, I called it, didn't I? You did. I'll get the smelling salts. 